Hello again, friends. I'm Amy Gimple, and welcome back to my channel, Amy Forever After. Before I jump into today's video, I just want to say I am not a wedding professional. I am just a bride who enjoys wedding planning, who has had to postpone her wedding because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Before I get into today's topic, I just want to say that if you have any questions about me and my fiance, our original wedding date, when we postponed our new wedding date, anything like that, you can go check out my previous video that I made last week, basically just telling the story of how and when we decided to postpone our wedding because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you want more background information on me and my fiance and our particular story, that's the best place to start. So you've seen the title of today's video because you clicked the thumbnail. You've decided to postpone your wedding because of coronavirus. What comes next? First of all, as someone who's been there, I want to start by saying, I'm sorry. That sucks. This whole situation sucks. It's sad. There's no good way to say it. And I feel for you and your fiance, and I hope the people around you feel for you too, because it's sad. And you're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to take the time you need to make your peace with this decision. Definitely take the time you need to feel your feelings before you dive into all of these postponing logistics. I know that's what I did. I took a week or two after we made the decision to just let it all sink in before I dove into the actual postponement process because all of those logistics can be stressful. So you want to make sure that you've at least started to make your peace with this before you go through all of this hectic rescheduling. People decide to postpone their wedding for a bunch of different reasons. I'm not sure what yours is, whether you just decided that an elopement isn't for you, or whether you decided that you want to move everything to next year without even having to worry about it, or whether you've decided you don't want to make any compromises, you just want to pick the whole day up as is, move it to next year, or even if your wedding is still months away and there's a good chance that things will be fine by then, maybe you just didn't want to risk, you know, people having difficulty flying or being afraid of travel, or maybe you didn't want to risk people wearing masks or being afraid to dance at your wedding. Whatever the reason is, you've decided to postpone your wedding. Where do you start now? So to reiterate one more time, I'm not a wedding professional, not part of the industry, just a bride who wants to share her experience because I know that there are a lot of brides and grooms and couples in general going through this scenario right now. And I just want to share how we got through it in case it helps you. As far as I'm concerned, there's a few different ways to begin this process, but what I think is most important is sitting down with your partner and deciding on your priorities. What parts of your big day are most important to you? What things can you not stand to lose or compromise on in this move? What things do you want to pick up exactly as they are and move to your new date? Because those things are sort of going to influence how and when you postpone and contact different vendors and go about this whole process. For my fiance and I, we found five things that we were not willing to compromise on now that we were sort of starting the wedding planning process over. And for us, those five things were, we wanted to keep our same wedding planner. We wanted all of our bridal party and close family and friends to be available and be able to attend without any risk. We wanted our same church and venue and our top two vendors that we didn't want to part with were our photographer and band. And lastly, we wanted to be able to honeymoon within reason close after the wedding date. Those were our top five must have things when we decided that we needed to reschedule and decided to look at what our priorities were going to be. Once you know your priorities, that's going to influence the availability of those priorities and how they influence your new date for next year or for whenever you're planning on postponing to. The vendors you've decided you can't part with, the people that you want to attend that you can't part with, their availability for next year is going to shape your availability for your new wedding date. And that is where the logistics start to get crazy and fun, but mostly just crazy and stressful. Once we had our top priorities and knew what our top vendors were, I made an entire new to-do list just for postponing. Coronavirus postponement list is what I believe I called it in my wedding planning folder. Depending on what your priorities are, yours might look a little bit different from ours, but the same principle still stands. Figure out what your priorities are and then make a list for each one of those things. What am I going to need to do to keep these priorities intact and move my wedding to next year? So I'm going to run through our list because I think it's a good jumping off point. You can take this list twist it, mess it around, make it fit for your wedding. But I think the easiest way to outline all of the things that you need to do is to sort of use my to-do list as a running starting point. So I'm actually gonna share a link to my to-do list in the description. So feel free to click that and follow along if you'd like. I'll also list it out here on the screen. My cat is about to jump up onto the shelf. Please don't do that, cat. <laughs> there she is. 
as I was saying, I'll list our specific to-do list down below so that you can use it and tweak it and change it to whatever you need for your postponement schedule. But for now, I'm gonna run through what our list looked like. And it went a little something like this. Number one, for us, our first step was checking in with our wedding planner to get her perspective on all of this. I will say before I keep going, even if you don't have a wedding planner, totally fine. You do not need one to postpone. She helped with some of the communication with our vendors, but for the most part, I handled all of this list myself because she technically wasn't supposed to take over until the final couple months of our engagement. So if you don't have a wedding planner, you'll be fine. You got this. Step number two, make a list of every single day next year or at whatever time you're looking to postpone that you and your fiance are free, available, and would be willing to get married. For my fiance and I, this part of the process included looking at when we would be able to honeymoon, which was one of our deal breakers, absolute must have things on our priority list. My fiance is a teacher, which significantly limits when we'll be able to vacation. So we were only looking at dates that we would be able to honeymoon within two months of when the new wedding date would be. So we looked at April because the earliest we would be able to honeymoon would be over the summer, so that would be June. So we would be willing to wait those two months to honeymoon if we got married in April. So at that point, any single time between April and August, we looked at to be able to postpone as a possibility one of those weekends in there. We went through and took out any major holidays that we wouldn't be interested in getting married on, and then we looked at our availability, weddings we'd already committed to next year, things like that, and took them out of the list too. Number three, another one of our must-have things was having all of our bridal party and close family be able to attend. So we reached out to all of our bridal party, our close family, and our close friends that absolutely must attend our wedding in our minds and ask them for their availability for next year. If they already had weddings that they were obligated to go to or bachelorettes or showers that were already on the schedule for next year or vacations that they were already planning to take, anything at all that would have been a weekend or date that they wouldn't be able to attend our new wedding, we asked for their availability. Availability. Then we sat down, compared our availability list with theirs, and took off any weekend that one of those must-have people would not be able to attend so that it wasn't even on our radar when reaching out to our vendors. Which brings me to item number four. Take that list of weekends that is still left after going through your availability and your close friends family bridal party lists availability. The weekends that are left, send those to your top priority vendors. For us that was our venue, our church, our band, and our photographer. So find out what your non-negotiables are, and once you have this list of availability, send it out to them. And this is where things get tricky because you're going to start getting a lot of availability back. The way I handled this was I made a Word document and listed out all of the weekends that our bridal party, family and friends, and us were all available. Same list that we had sent out to our must-have vendors. I put all those weekends in a Word document, and as I started getting the availability back from my vendors, if they weren't available for a particular weekend, I made it read in the Word document and wrote a little note as to who wasn't available. If you're organized and OCD and a little bit anal like I am, that might be a good way for you to do it. Other people might just want to write it down in your planner and just cross things off as people come in. Whatever it is, find a system that works for you because all of that availability coming back in does start to get a little confusing. Step number five, and this is a big one, pick your new wedding date. At this point, you've heard back from all of your top priority people. Hopefully you've got your system going and you know what weekends are available for everyone that is important to you. If you're like me, your decision will be made for you. <laughs> there was only one weekend between April and August of next summer that worked for us, our bridal party, close family and friends, and our top four vendors. So Kenny and I were forced to move to August 7th, 2021. Hopefully you're on the luckier side and you have some options. Sit down with your fiance, weigh the different dates, the different weekends, figure out what works best for you, and pick your new date. Item number six, not a very exciting one, but an important one. Those top vendors that you just got their availability for, tell them what day you're moving to as soon as possible so you can lock in that new date and then update your contracts. We personally went to those priority vendors first and updated those contracts before we even let our other vendors know that we were thinking of postponing because we just wanted to get our top people locked in, locked and loaded for next year, contracts updated, the whole nine yards. So that was our first thing we did after picking our new date was those top four vendors, got the new date locked in, updated contracts, signed, returned, documented on our end, good to go. Number seven, figure out any other urgent items that need to be addressed sooner than later regarding your wedding. For us, that was the hotel block. 
We already had family and friends that had reserved rooms in our hotel block because we postponed in mid-May and our wedding was August. So some people had already made travel plans, they'd already reached out to our hotel, reserved in the block, all that good stuff. So we knew that that was something that we needed to figure out sooner than later. We reached out to our hotel, they decided to just cancel all reservations in the existing block, and they opened a brand new one so that when we let our family know that we were postponing, we could just tell them your previous reservations have already been canceled, nothing you need to do there. When you're ready, just call and book in the new block. So that was a pretty high priority item for us. Look at your logistics beginning to end and figure out what sort of things like that need to be taken care of before you announce your postponement so that you're prepared to answer any questions that you're going to get from family and friends and guests, etc. Speaking of which, number eight is let your bridal party, close family and friends, or anyone with looming travel arrangements know that you've decided to officially postpone. When it came to our family, I had our immediate families, mostly my mom and Kenny's mom, reach out to the families and let them know about the postponement so that if anyone needed to change travel plans sooner than later, they had the ability to do so. When it came to the bridal party, I decided to write out a big email where I listed out everything that I think that they could possibly need to know about the postponement so that if they had any questions, all of their answers would be right there in one place. In case you want to send a similar email to your bridal party, I'll quickly run through some of the things that I outlined in that email. Number one, most importantly, new date. Number two, what we just talked about, updated hotel block information because some of my bridal party had already made reservations. Number three, dresses and suits. Are there going to be any changes to the dresses now that you've postponed? Some people might be changing seasons, they might want new dresses altogether, whatever it may be. Are you keeping the dresses the same? Do they have to keep them in their closet? Will they have the option to change if they gain some weight or lose some weight over the next year? Give your bridal party guidance as to what you want from them for their dresses because chances are they probably have a bridal party, bridesmaid, dress, whatever you want to call it, keeping up space in their closet now. Same goes for the guy suits. Are you changing where you're renting from? Have their rental reservations been canceled? Are they buying suits, returning suits, whatever it may be, come up with a plan for what you want your people to wear and if it's changing now that you've postponed. Four, bridal shower. If you already had your bridal shower, were you wanting to do another smaller one closer to the wedding day? If you didn't have your bridal shower at all yet, were you hoping to postpone it further? Did you want to cancel it altogether? Figure out what you want for your shower so that you can give your bridal party some guidance. Similarly, bachelorette plans. If you already went on your bachelorette, are you hoping to do something smaller with your girls closer to the wedding date so you have something to get you pumped up leading up to your new wedding day? If you didn't have it before, are you postponing it? Figure out what your plans are for your bachelor and bachelorette parties so you can sort of nudge your bridal party in the right direction. For me, we were planning on flying to Florida and we were actually supposed to go in two weeks at the end of June. Obviously, it didn't really seem safe to fly that soon. I didn't want anyone to feel like they had to go. So when we decided to postpone, we decided to just cancel it all together, get credit for the people who had already bought flights, and then we're going to push it back to a later day closer to the wedding. For my fiance and his groomsmen, they already had a reservation for an Airbnb in a short town in Ocean City, Maryland. So they wanted to try to just reach out to Airbnb and push their reservation back a year without fully canceling it so that they didn't have to deal with exchanges, saving, giving money back to some of the guys, redispersing it, all of that good stuff. So sort of have a plan of what you're thinking so that you can lead your bridal party in the right direction on shower and bachelorette. If you are postponing your bachelorette, especially if it has something to do with travel or if you're going away somewhere for more than one night or you're flying, you'll probably want to reschedule that sooner than later just so that your bridal party has something to plan on. They can either make exchanges like my fiance and his groomsmen did or they can preserve their flights, whatever it may be, it's probably just easier to pick a new date sooner than later just so that your bridal party has it on their calendar and they can plan around it for the next year or the next two months or for however long it is until your new date leading up to your new wedding day. Last thing to include in this email, thank your bridal party. I cannot understate this enough. Wedding planning is crazy and while we may be the ones that are going through the most stress going through this postponement, our bridal party is making changes and adjustments and experiencing some of that stress too. They thought that they were going to be in a wedding and have to pay for all of this stuff in a couple of months and now we're picking it up and moving it to another time. They might have just gotten lumped into being in your bridal party for another 12 months when they thought that they were scot-free. So thank your bridal party for being so flexible. If they've supported you in any way, make sure you know how much you appreciate it. That is a big one.
Back to our overall to-do list, number nine, make a list of all of the other vendors you haven't reached out to yet and start postponing with them. Reach out to them, find out their new availability. If they're good and they're available, great, you're in the clear, get that contract updated. If they're not available, figure out what you need to do to move on and find another vendor. Maybe you need to breach contract, maybe you need to negotiate a little bit. Some vendors are being really, really flexible with the whole COVID thing. Some aren't because this is their way of life and they're a small business and they need to make money somehow. Try to be understanding of your wedding vendors. They're been, they've been put through the winger. The winger? <laughs> The winger they've been put through the ringer too because their industry has been completely unearthed and flips up flipped upside down i cannot speak today the same way that your wedding has so try to reach an agreement with them and find a replacement if you need to number 10 and this is another big one update your wedding website depending on who you're using for your wedding website some places like zola have offered an ability to just put a little blurb on the top of your page announcing that you've either postponed, canceled, things are the same, whatever it may be. That's a great way to just slap it on top of your page, write in bread letters saying, hey, we've postponed, pay attention, and announce it to whoever stumbles across your page out of your guest list. You'll also want to update all of the other information on your website. That little blurb was great, but we also decided to add our own paragraph further down on our homepage explaining why we made this decision and announcing that we've moved to a new date. Then you're also gonna wanna update all of the information that you have for your new wedding date for the time being. So on your schedule page, update all of those dates to reflect your new schedule. On your rooming block page, if you have any changes there, make sure you update that. Just make sure you're going page by page through your wedding uh, website and updating whatever you can to make sure you're always reflecting the most recent information. So that once you completely announce your change to the wide spectrum of people attending your wedding, when they go to your wedding website, they have all of the answers they need right there. This brings me to number 11, which is all things stationary. If you're like me, there's a good chance you already bought your invitation suites for your old wedding date, and now you've just got a big box of really, really beautiful invitations with the wrong date on them, and that is a major bummer. <laughs> Fortunately, a lot of websites in light of the pandemic are working with couples who have already purchased their stationery to do reprints at a discounted price. I was working with Minted, they were really great. They're not reprinting everything for free, but they are giving me a discount that's gonna make a huge difference when I go to reprint everything round two. So if you've already had your invites printed or anything else that already has your date on it, reach out to whoever you got it from and see if you can make something work so that you're not busting your budget to do everything again for that one tiny number that's wrong on that beautiful piece of paper. Furthermore, this is kind of tucked in under stationary, but figure out how you're going to announce your date change to everyone you've invited. Hopefully at this point you've made sure that close friends and family know, anyone who is traveling, like I said, but you wanna make sure that the word gets out to everyone. So my fiance and I originally, when we did our Save the Dates, did a postcard style just because they were more affordable that way. We opted to do the exact same thing for our Save Our New Dates. I'll put in a picture of them here, but basically it just said Save Our New Date with our new date on it, and then on the back, we had a little blurb explaining our decision and explaining where they can go to get all of their new answers to questions that have come up because of this whole postponement shenanigans. <laughs> if you don't want to pay for a reprint to do save the dates all over again, then you can post on Facebook, you can do an email announcement, but find some way to make sure that the word about your postponement is reaching out to every single person who either got a save the date or an invitation already, so that no one shows up on the old date to a place expecting a wedding that's not going to happen. Number 12, and this one's kind of a bummer, but your dress. You gotta have a plan for it. It's gonna be a bummer when it comes in if you haven't worn it yet. Uh, and then depending on how long you're postponing for. So try to emotionally and mentally prepare for that, um, but also have a logistical plan for it because storing a wedding dress uh, takes up a lot of space. So do you already have your wedding dress? Are you expecting it to come into a salon? Can the salon hold it for you longer than you were originally supposed to so that you can pick it up closer to your new date? Or can they only hold it for so long and you have to go pick it up and find a place for it? Also, alterations. Maybe you haven't had any alterations done yet and that's great, 
don't do any until closer to your wedding date. If you have had alterations done, maybe call the tailor who did those alterations for you and ask them what the game plan is. Can they let it back out next year if it needs to be? Can they take it in even more next year if it needs to be? But basically, wherever you are in the dress purchasing alterations process, have a plan for it in the back of your mind and figure out how that's going to change based off of your new date. Number 19, update your to-do list. You probably had a running to-do list of your wedding planning process before you decided to postpone. And if you're like me, as soon as the threat of postponement started to creep in, you probably stopped looking at it because you were either upset that if you planned, it wasn't going to mean anything and you're going to have to cancel it, or just the thought of doing more when you were already so stressed <laughs> about the actual wedding even happening was nauseating to you. So revisit that to-do list wherever it was. Maybe you had a to-do list on an app like The Knot, or maybe you had a to-do list in a Word document like I did, or maybe you had a physical planner that you were using. Wherever your to-do list was, it's time to revisit it and update it. There's a lot of deadlines on there that probably are no longer accurate based off of when your new wedding date is. So you're going to want to go through that thing and update it point by point, change the deadlines, figure out if there's anything that you need to do again now that you've postponed or things that you don't need to do at all anymore. Just run through it point by point, figure out what is still relevant and if it needs a new deadline and leave it at that because that's your new planning to-do list and it stinks that you know you're kind of starting over. <laughs> but it is what it is, right? I know you guys are with me, okay. Number 14, and I touched on this a little bit earlier, but thank your bridal party or whoever your support system was during this time. Whether it was your parents that you were leaning on, a close friend, your maid of honor, all of your bridesmaids, your best man, your bridesmaid, your groomsman, whoever it was, thank them. Because chances are you were a little bit frantic and a little bit up and down and mood swinging all over the place because you're allowed to, it's a very stressful process, but whoever was there for you to lean on during all of this, thank that person. <laughs> Maybe consider sending a card or a thank you to all of your bridal party, or if you can swing it, a little thank you gift now that they're stuck with you for another year. I personally wrote everyone in my bridal party just a little thank you, and I got them a scrunchie and a face mask, and the thank you said, thank you for helping me hold it all together, you know, like a scrunchie, Hold it all together. And then it said, I couldn't have faced this without you. Face mask. I know. It's cringy. I'm cringing just thinking about it. But I thought it was a sweet little way to say thank you. It wasn't very expensive. I also hadn't seen any of these people because we were quarantined for two months and I missed them like crazy. So I thought it was a nice way to mail them out, a little pick-me-up, let them know that I appreciate that they were there for the uncertainty, for being so flexible, for letting me know their availability a full year out for an entire new wedding, and for letting me vent and call and cry whenever I needed to. If someone has been there for you, just make sure that they know that you appreciate it. And number 15, and this is the most important one on this whole list, which is why I saved it for last, take care of yourself. This is a crazy time. Wedding planning is crazy enough as it is, and now you're trying to do it in the middle of a pandemic that no one can really predict. Take care of yourself. Make sure you're doing whatever self-care looks like for you. Read a book, take a bath, go for a jog. That one's not me, but if that is you, awesome. Have a glass of wine, that one's me. Whatever it is that keeps you feeling like you, do that. And on top of that, Carve out some time for you and your fiance because you've just gone through a crazy journey together postponing a wedding. Whether you were two weeks away, a hundred days away, six months away, however close you got, you were probably grieving the progress you made in the wedding planning process. You're grieving how close you were to being husband and wife and you're going to need a little TLC together, just the two of you. There's also a good chance that you took some of your frustrations out on each other during this process because we tend to hurt the ones we love when we are at our most stressed and frustrated. So take some time to focus on the two of you. Remember why you're getting married and remember that when it finally happens, it's going to be the best day ever because you're marrying the love of your life and that is what's important. So that is the end of my list. I'm sorry, I know it's long, but also postponing a wedding is a lot of work, so kind of makes sense. You want to make sure you don't miss anything important. If you have any questions or if you have a question about something that I didn't cover in this list or you think I missed something, 
let me know. Leave a comment below. If you're just jumping into wedding planning or if you're sort of starting over with this whole postponement business and you want to save yourself some time, I'm actually starting an Etsy shop where I sell some of the templates that I've made during my wedding planning process. So you can log on there, instant download some of them to save yourself some time. There's more coming, but right now my template for guest list tracking is there. So you can go there, buy it, instantly download it, and then all you need to do is plug in your guest's information and you're good to go. You can use it to track things like their name and their address, obviously, but also what events they're invited to, like wedding, rehearsal dinner, shower, bachelorette, bachelor party, all that good stuff. And you can also use it to track their meal choices. Do you think they'll need a hotel room? Are they a child who won't be consuming alcohol? Uh, do they have any dietary restrictions? Anything you can think of that you would need to know about a guest, it's already built into this template. So save yourself some time, go ahead and download it, and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching. Just as a reminder, I do post new videos here on Amy Forever After every single Sunday, so if you found this video helpful, please check out some of my other videos and come back every week going forward to see if there's anything else that might help you out in your wedding planning process. From one bride to another or from a bride to a groom, wedding planning is hard. Sometimes you just need to hear how other people are doing and coping with it to make things a little bit easier on yourself. And if you are dealing with planning a wedding right now given everything going on in this world, I am sending you hugs because I know firsthand how stressful it is. I know how stressful it was before a pandemic hit and I know how infinitely more stressful it is now. So it's gonna be okay. You're gonna get through this. You and your partner got this and at the end of the day you'll get to start the beginning of a beautiful marriage because that's what it's all about and we're gonna get there eventually. I promise. We just gotta get through all these crazy logistics first. So on that note, I am off. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week.